Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the heat equation along a long metallic cylinder. Let's consider our heat equation. The heat equation is UT is Laplacian of U. And I'm going to consider this equation for x squared and y squared between on the unit circle. So I'm going to, my domain for this is going to be the following. x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 and T is greater than or equal to 0. And I'll give it some initial conditions that u of 1 on the circle itself, u of 1 t is equal to 0. In other words, on the actual boundary of that cylinder, the temperature is 0 for all time. It's insulated. And then we have some initial conditions that u of, in this case, I'm going to call this, I'm going to write temporarily that depending on r and 0 is some function f of r. And we're going to assume that when we put this into polar coordinates, there's no angular dependence on the heat distribution. So that's going to be the assumption we make in this problem. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put the Laplacian into polar coordinates. So recall that Laplacian of u is going to be urr plus 1 over r ur plus 1 over r squared u theta theta. And we're going to suppose that the theta dependence on the solution to this u is equal to 0. So suppose, and this is going to be an assumption of our problem to simplify things, suppose that u of theta theta, u theta theta, is going to be equal to 0. So there's no theta dependence. The partial of u with respect to theta, suppose that u theta is equal to 0. Okay. In other words, there's no angular dependence on the solution. Okay. Then in this case, this will, part will go away, and the Laplacian. And so our problem becomes the following in polar coordinates. And so, of course, what's our situation over here? So we have, imagine a situation like this. Here's x and here's y. We can do this as r and theta. And then my boundary over here is this unit circle. And I'm thinking t over here is the positive x over here. So what we really have over here is we're thinking of this in like a sort of like a cylinder. We're thinking about the distribution of temperature and there's no angular dependence on the temperature distribution like so, right? So in other words, each of these circles over here is going to give us the temperature of that disk at a different time, right? And that's, of course, the negative time where the heat equation is ill-posed. So we don't like, we only consider time going positive in the positive direction, okay? So our PDE turns into the following. Our PDE is UT is equal to URR plus 1 over R UR, like so. And then we have that U of 1 T0, and then the boundary conditions are the same. So we're going to separate variables now. So let's separate variables. Okay, if we do so, we're going to let u of r and t be a function t capital of t and a function r capital of r, like so. We plug this into the equation, what are we going to get? We're going to get t prime r, so we have a t prime of t r of r is equal to t of t, r double prime of r plus t of t, and then r prime of r, and those are times 1 over r, like so. And so when we solve this problem over here, when we get the variables by themselves, we have t prime over t. I'm going to suppress the variables now. t prime over t is going to be equal to r double prime plus 1 over r, the independent variable r prime over r. And this is going to be a separation constant over here. So there's three different cases to consider. I'm going to write this in the most elementary case. I'm going to write down negative lambda over here, negative lambda, okay? Actually, we're going to write negative lambda squared. Now, that's clearly a negative separation constant. Let's think about the other cases. In the other cases, what would happen is if, if this separation constant was positive, so there's two cases to consider that we're going to rule out automatically, right? So two cases to rule out. So if lambda was equal to 0, lambda equals 0, what would that tell us? That would tell me that r double prime plus 1 over r, r prime, would be equal to 0, right? Which tells me that r prime, r, r double prime plus r prime, is equal to zero. So that tells me that r, r prime prime is zero, which tells me that r, r prime is a constant c, which tells me that r of r is going to be a constant c, c1, plus a constant c2 log of r. Now the log of r is blowing up at when r is equal to zero, right? So I don't want a solution, with, I don't want an infinite temperature distribution or a negative infinite temperature distribution at the origin, right? So we're gonna rule out that case over there. And furthermore, if you're a constant, then we know that when you plug in r equals one, you can't be zero. So I, can't, I can rule out this case that lambda cannot be equal to zero in this case, right? So in other words, there's no solutions that are consistent with the boundary conditions in the case when lambda is equal to zero. So there's no solutions in this case. Now also, when lambda is positive, so if lambda is greater than zero, if lambda, is greater than zero. So let's put it like this. So if lambda is equal to zero, we get this. But now if we have a positive separation constant, if this was a positive lambda squared, we would have what? In the positive separation constant, 
would imply what? If there was a positive separation constant, I would have r double prime plus one over r, r. And then if it was positive, I have a minus lambda squared r is equal to zero. But this equation over here has modified Bessel functions as, a, as solutions, right? So the modified Bessel functions, so modified Bessel function solutions, In other words, the solution to this are I zero of lambda, lambda r. And this equation over here, these I zero of lambda r's do not vanish, right? So there's no root, there's no positive roots of these things. So it can't satisfy the boundary condition. Can't satisfy the boundary condition. And the way you think about that is you think of the Bessel functions like J zero. We think of like J one half, for example. J one half is the square root of two over pi x times the sine of x. So basically the roots of the Bessel functions are sort of interpolating the roots of the trigonometric function. So there's an infinite number of roots of a Bessel function of any, any positive order. However, when you plug in i to the Bessel function, when you plug in i x to the Bessel functions, you have functions that no longer oscillate, that have growth, and these i zero, these modified Bessel functions, have no roots, so they can't satisfy this insulation condition on the boundary of this wire, the wired surface over here, okay? So there's no positive separation constants either, right? So the only ones we can possibly have are these ones over here, these negative separation constants. Now we're in great shape because let's look at this equation now over here. So now we get two equations. So this will tell us that t prime is equal to negative lambda squared, negative lambda squared t. And it will tell me that r double prime plus one over r, r prime plus, plus now, plus lambda squared r is equal to zero, and we know how to solve this equation over here. The solution to this equation over here is just the Bessel equation of order zero scaled by this parameter lambda. So this equation over here will have solutions at constant j zero of lambda r are the solutions. The other solution to this, y zero of lambda r, the Neumann Bessel functions, is unbounded at the origin, right? This behaves like log of r near r equals zero, right? So we can't have that modified Neumann Bessel function, so the only solutions we're gonna get over here are these Bessel functions j zero of r. Now in order to satisfy the boundary condition, of course these solutions are easy to do, right? These will say that t of t is gonna be a constant e to the negative lambda squared t, like that, okay? Those are the solutions to that second equation over there. That's a trivial solution. And now of course these, these time functions over here, these t of t, these exponential functions, can't help me satisfy the boundary condition. So the only way the boundary condition is satisfied, u of one t equals zero, is gonna force j zero of lambda to be zero, j zero of lambda to be equal to zero, right? And so if we let, we know that j zero from, from previous videos, let's let lambda one, lambda two, lambda n be the roots of j zero of x then what are our basic solutions? Our basic solutions are going to be a constant C, we can say CK, and then what? CK, the exponential of negative lambda K squared T, and then J zero of lambda K R, right? And so that tells me that my solution is what? My solution is therefore gonna be U of R and T is gonna be the sum k goes from one to infinity, ck e to the negative lambda k squared t, j zero of lambda k r, like that. Now how do we find these coefficients ck? Well to find the coefficients ck, we're gonna use the fact that j zero of lambda k and j zero of lambda l are orthogonal zero one, right? So now the idea is that if we wanted to find these ck, what could we do? When we plug in t equals zero over here, we have to have that f of r, f of r, is the sum, k goes from one to infinity, of ck, ck, j zero, of what? Of lambda k, lambda k, r. And now to figure out what those coefficients are gonna be, what we'll do is the following. We'll multiply this by j zero of lambda l r, and then an r, and then integrate from zero to one, dr. We'll do the same thing over here. We'll do an r, and then a j zero of lambda l r, like that, dr, of course dr, and then all the terms over here that are gonna cancel out, except for this normalization constant over here times this. So it turns out that we're gonna conclude from this is we're gonna conclude that this coefficient ck in our problem is gonna be what? Is gonna be the integral from zero to one of r j zero of lambda k r, and then times f of r dr, f of r dr, over 
this thing that we get in the bottom over here is going to be j0 squared times r, right? The integral from 0 to 1 of r, j0 of lambda k of r quantity squared dr, right? And so that's the ck. So we take this expression for the ck over here and fill it in right over here to this part of the formula, that will give us the solution to the boundary value problem with the given initial data. Now, there's a lot more work to do in terms of actually formally proving that this series converges, but if we spend a little bit of time and carefully think of this in analogy with the convergence of issues of the Fourier series, and we use the orthogonality of the Bessel functions with respect to the way r dr on the interval 0, 1, we'll be able to conclude the similar result that these are exactly the coefficients which yield a unique solution to the heat equation in this disk, in this disk region under the assumption that there's no angular dependence on the temperature distribution. Thank you very much.